let's talk about earning synchronous versus asynchronous income. So we'll talk about synchronous first. This is traditionally how we earn. So synchronous income is when, for example, you work two weeks towards the beginning of January and you get paid for those two weeks of work in or around those two weeks, probably during it or right after it within a week or so, right? And then you repeat, you work the next two weeks and you get paid for the next two weeks in or around those two weeks. That's synchronous income. But there's another way to make income and that's asynchronously. So asynchronous income is when, for example, you spend almost the whole month of January working on a product and you start earning a little bit for that product in February, a little more in March, more in April, May, June, so on and so on, hopefully for the rest of the year, right? But if you're making evergreen products like information products that contain lessons, instructions, and information that will still apply next year and the year after that, then technically your asynchronous product can be something that you create in January of one year and keep earning with for all these years to come, right? So that's asynchronous in the sense that when you did the work is different from when you got paid for the work, right? Let me highlight asynchronous income with a real life story. One year, I worked a few weeks in the month of December to create a product slash workbook. It was a book that it, I sold physical copies of, but I did it through amazon.com in a way that I didn't have to carry any inventory. So I never have to touch the book. I just uploaded a file and it started selling. So I worked on it in the month of December and then I started earning in December, but also in January of the next year, February of that next year, March, then all the rest of the months of that next year, all the rest of the months of the following year, the year after that, the year after that, et cetera, et cetera. I have five years pictured here, but it's actually been six years since I published it and it's been earning a consistent income since then. And let me tell you that there is no better feeling than being over here, let's say in September of year two, and getting paid for work that you did all that time ago, right? Or being over here in August or being over here or just this whole year. It's, there's no better income feeling. I won't say there's no better feeling, but there's no better income feeling than being far away from a time that you created a product and still earning from it. Here's another real life story to highlight asynchronous earning. One year in the month of July, I had fewer than 500 people on my email list, but I got this idea that I wanted to write and publish a book. I thought it'd be a good idea to maybe do it as a PDF ebook, something I could sell digitally from my site and therefore, you know, high profit margins, right? I'm keeping 97% of whatever I make because it's really just credit card fees, right? If I'm selling a digital book from my site. So I got this idea, but I hadn't written the book yet. But what I did was in that month, July, I decided to set a release date of September or in September, but to start selling the book in July. So I made about $1,000 in the month of July selling the book about a thousand in August, a thousand in September, a thousand in October and so on. But the actual work was done during a few weeks in September and a week or so in July. In July, I created a few of the pages of the book so that I could have a preview to show people, you know, what was coming. I had an outline and I had a few mock-up pages of the book. So I created those in July to help me sell it. And then I did the main work of writing the book in September. But as you can see, this is asynchronous as well, right? I started earning in July before most of the work had been done. I earned in August before it had been written. I earned during, you know, before, during, and after it had been written in September and then kept earning uh, after that, right? October and so on and so forth. So this is another highlight example of asynchronous earning, asynchronous income, where you are making money at a time different than when you did the work. So you can make money before you do the work, you can make money after you do the work, or in this case, you can make money before and after you do the work. Okay, so that's synchronous versus asynchronous income, but 
there's one more thing that we need to add to this to make this the best income of your life. So let's go over that right quick. The thing we need to add is asymmetrical income. But first, let's break down what is symmetrical earning and income versus asymmetrical. So symmetrical, as you'll probably recognize from the word, is when you, let's say, put in one unit of work over here and get paid something equivalent to that one unit of work. Pretend like that's exactly symmetrical, okay? And so then you repeat the next month, you put in the work and you get paid for that work. Again, pretend these are symmetrical. So in this example, let's say this is January, this is February, this is March, and this would continue dot, 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 so on and so forth, right? However, asymmetrical earning is where you put in this one unit of work over here in January and earn maybe this much worth, which is more than the one unit of work. Or maybe it's this much. Technically, since it's asymmetrical, it could also be this much. But we want this asymmetrical to work in your favor and be more than what you put in. But let me show you where the magic happens. It's where asynchronous income, which we just talked about, combines with asymmetrical. First, let's go through the other possibilities though. The first possibility, which we are used to and is just okay, let's say, is synchronous and symmetrical income. So you work over a two week period for let's say 80 hours, and then you get paid for that same 80 hours during or shortly after the time that you do the work, right? Synchronous and symmetrical, we're used to this, getting a paycheck every two weeks or maybe twice a month, whatever it may be. Synchronous and symmetrical, okay. Now, something that's a little bit better would be synchronous and asymmetrical earning. So you work for those same two weeks, so again, let's say about 80 hours, but you get paid as if you worked for let's say 160 hours or even 320 hours or heck 3000 hours you get paid for seemingly much more than the work that you did right disproportionate but the when is still going to be during the time that you did the work during during or shortly after that two weeks is when you get paid so that's great right because you're making more money than what it seems this 80 hours of work should bring in or would normally bring in uh, but you're only being paid for it you know once and it's again during or right around the time that you did the work so definitely that is better than synchronous and symmetrical. What's worse than synchronous and symmetrical income is asynchronous yet symmetrical income. So in this instance, you still work for your 80 hours and let's put those back in January. But instead of getting paid for those 80 hours in January when you did the work, you get paid over here in June. So in essence, you were just waiting for months and months and months to get paid. So you're being paid way after you did the work, but it's the same amount, you know, it's for the 80 hours, right? Another way that asynchronous yet symmetrical income could come into play is say getting paid in January, but having it hang over your head this whole time that in August for two weeks, you're gonna have to do some type of work. So you are working the 80 hours in this instance, yes, and you're getting paid for the 80 hours in this instance, but you got paid way before you actually did the work. So this would be an example of this might be if you're a wedding photographer and your customer paid you the deposit or paid most of or all of the fee over here in January, but their wedding was in August and then you edited their photos for two weeks after that and gave them their photos. For a lot of people, you've already spent the money that you made in January if you're getting paid months and months and months later, right? So I consider this the worst because you're not getting d disproportionately more money, uh, but the time in between actually doing the work and earning the money is can be quite drastic at times. So what is the best way to earn or what's the best income, the best income feeling? In my opinion, it is taking the time to do the work let's say of creating an information product or something like that in whatever month you may be in. And keep in mind, some information products might only take you 10 hours to create, some might take you 100, etc. But then the great thing is you can earn for months and months 
if not years and years to come as my real life stories illustrated for you. So you are working for the 10 hours or the 100 hours or more, but you're getting paid for, let's say, 200 hours per month from that work? Uh, or what if it's only you're getting paid for 20 hours per month for that work? Well, after five months of making that much money, you have reimbursed yourself, if you will, for the work that you did, uh, but you always have the ability to increase how much you're getting paid. You know, so you could theoretically get paid per month as if you did 2000 hours worth of work. It's disproportionate to the work that you put in is the idea. So when are you getting paid? You're getting paid hopefully every month after you, sometimes before, right? But every month after you create your product. So you may be wondering what types of products work for asynchronous income, asymmetrical income, or both. Again, as that's that ideal place to be in where you are earning for something before or after you actually do the work and you're earning disproportionately more, right? It's asymmetrical in your favor, what you're earning. So here are a few ideas for you. So with events, you can have these events online or in person, but let's just say, for example, you're hosting an online event. You can actually get paid before the event occurs, ticket, ticket price, whatever. Uh, you can get paid after as well if you turn the event into some type of evergreen product. So if you had an online conference and you got ticket sales before the conference actually happened and then the conference happened and then you also started making money after the conference happened because you packaged it into video recordings and workbooks or something. So events can easily be something where you're earning asynchronously and asymmetrically. Uh, the same with books. You could theoretically get paid before you make the book and then hopefully right after you've published the book as well. The same with courses and education. You Education products, you can make them asynchronous and asymmetrical. Now, once you get into something like services, information services, where you're doing group coaching, for example, or you're doing, um, you know, office hours or live trainings where people can come live and get some feedback, some prescriptions, ideas of what to do from you. Now, the thing is, you can usually earn asymmetrically with these types of events because you're spending the two hours regardless if one person shows up or if 80 people show up. So you can work for two hours and get paid as if you worked for a hundred hours, right? Or more. But the thing is, it's usually synchronous income. You're getting paid in that moment to, you know, coach that group of people, but you're not getting paid after the fact. However, you could design your group coaching program as something that could be packaged and sold after the fact as well. So even your information services, if you plan them the quote unquote right way, if you will, can be both asynchronous and asymmetrical. The same with maybe doing something that has like a community style or element to it. Uh, maybe you're teaching, you're doing a mastermind and community members can show up live and benefit from each other's company and questions and ideas, but you're also packaging it in a way that it can be sold afterwards or so that the community stays open and kind of runs itself. Um, and definitely the same with tools and resources. It can be asynchronous and asymmetrical if you create, for example, a template that somebody can download and use. This could be a pattern for sewing or this could be, you know, copywriting templates where people can just fill in the blank and write their own sales page or about page. You could theoretically sell it before it's created, you know, and you could sell it after it's created and continue to sell it. So these are just a few ideas, but stay tuned during this series because we are going to be getting into how you can start to transition what might be synchronous and symmetrical income to be asynchronous and asymmetrical income. So I hope you enjoyed the overview.